The great news is that India is through to the semi-finals after winning their duel against Kazakhstan. In the first match, they drew and in the second match, they won. Uh, important wins came from Harika and Marianne Gomes. I'm going to take you through some of the exciting moments from the quarterfinals. It was thrilling to watch. Some of the games went until the very end. And uh, I think defense was a strong 40 for Team India. The players exhibited great defensive skills and were not only able to save the game but also outplay their opponents and win from a minus position. First, I have the game between Harika and Abdul Malik Zansaya, and Harika opted for D3 Rai Lopez, which I usually call as the butterscotch variation of the Rai Lopez. Uh, no, it's not official, it's just my, my name, uh, the name that I have given in my personal notes. And uh, in this uh, opening, after Bishop C8, Daniel Nadersky had played 92 in a game against Khoroshev in uh, 2021 on chess.com. And after Bishop E6, Bishop E6, he had he'd be he had played C3, but um, Harika went for C3 first and then played Bishop D2, which is a novelty. In this game, uh, her opponent after Bishop G5 came up with a very strong pawn sacrifice c4 blunting this bishop and this ensured that black had a lot of activity in a matter of few moves black was able to get the rook to the seventh rank and it looked very dangerous for white but harika was very precise and she realized that she had to activate this bishop and uh, she sensed an opportunity and immediately activated her bishop after bishop b1 and then it looked like she can hold the position and uh, what, what she did was not just defend the position, she in fact outplayed her opponent and in fact managed to win a pawn. So as a result, she was able to put a lot of pressure on the team and she kept playing uh, and the crucial moment in this game uh, came after King e3. You can see that she's a pawn up, Black's King is stuck in a very difficult situation and in this position after rook a3 check, bishop d3, she's still pressing and after rook b6 check and king d2, there is a funny stalemate idea which I have a feeling Harika saw and uh, then eventually she um, went for an ending where the position is a draw. And after king d2, rook a2 check, um, she played king d1 and my hunch is that she was considering on king e3 bishop d4 check which is a nice idea. Uh, especially in time trouble because after king d4 or rook a4 check if you play something like bishop c4 the game is immediately drawn because of rook takes c4 the king is in a stalemate position but white still has a way to win after king e5 and after let's say rook a5 check bishop b5 comes and then there is no stalemate because black has to play rook b5 and after rook b5 that allows the king these two squares so that was a very interesting moment in the game but uh, she played king d1 and uh, here after after king e1 the position is a uh, draw because black has bishop c3 king cannot come to d1 because of rook d2 check so she has to go king f1 then comes a drawing idea which is rook f2 check and uh, after king f2 bishop d4 this is draw so that was the draw and then uh, next uh, it was vaishali and uh, so Dinara versus Vaishali. Dinara is a very strong player as well. And after knight takes d4, uh, Vaishali played h5. We have also seen this uh, in the Olympiad, and this has been a specialty of some of the Indian players. And to point out, after knight f3 castles, this position after um, castles has been played by Adiban with the black side against Kone Rohampi, and this has also been played by Pragnananda. So it is not a surprise to see Vaishali employ this line and she her opponent played knight c3 and after queen c7 she played knight a6. She achieved a good position and then she, at one moment she came up with a very nice tal like sacrifice which I like very much. Uh, it was fun to watch this game uh, in this position after knight c5 her opponent played h3. Take a moment to see what you would do as black. Now that the knight on g4 is here, uh, now that the knight is on g4, it's very obvious that, you know, I am prompting at knight takes f2, which is a brilliant move. The point is that after king takes f2, black has a strong response, which was missed by uh, Vaishali. She played knight e4 check directly, but bishop a4 was a way to proceed and keep the advantage. 
The point is white cannot play b3 because of knight e4 check followed by knight takes c3. You can see that the bishop is captured and still the rook is also hanging. After bishop a4, if white plays rook d2, then the idea is to play bishop h6 and uh, keep the balance again. After e3, you can take this and then play queen f5, idea e4. So all these variations are just in black's favor. But after king f2, knight e4, check king e1, knight g3, she is playing for compensation and uh, there is no advantage anymore. But I must admit that black still has practical compensation and that is the reason she was able to uh, achieve this draw. The king is not so safe and black has some pawns in return and uh, eventually after queen c3, king f2, queen s3, she got a perpetual here and she drew the game. I think this draw was an important result for India which saved the match and in the next game we have uh, Bhakti versus uh, uh, Kamali Denova and uh, Bhakti got a great position out of the opening. In this position, she played e5, very strong move. Typical of this kind of position, the point is to blunt this bishop and then play f5, very well played. And after queen e8, knight e4, she increased her advantage and uh, we reach this critical position after knight e3. I think here it was important to play queen b3 so that you keep this queen under check. It's not coming to a4. Also, rook is not coming to b8. So it puts black in a very awkward situation. But she went queen c1 and her opponent played queen a4. And after a3, bishop a6. I think this was the turning point in the game. Rook b4 was uh, a way to go. And after queen d7, to take that exchange and then play rook f3, intending to play rook into a3 and give up that exchange and rely on these two beautiful pawns for an advantage. But she went bishop before and after this her opponent never looked back and kept increasing the advantage with rook c8 and queen d7 and this is a typical benoni kind of position for black and black was really comfortable throughout the game and she won the game so here we lost a point and then came mary and gomes so mary and gomes uh, in both the games she kept playing until the very end and slowly outplayed her opponent she played 94A6. I think this is a system she has been playing very, uh, very much in the last uh, maybe 10 years, I think. And um, in this, uh, she got her Maroxi bind structure, which I think she is also well versed with. And then came um, in, in this position, I would like to highlight one point, and that is after knight d3. I mean, there's one more point. Let me just get, yeah, this position after knight d3 and rook b5, rook c1. And if you look at the position, both the sides have equal material, but white has uh, a pass pawn backed by its rook and uh, more chances. But slowly, you can see Marianne Gomes outplaying her opponent first with a4 and then g4, idea is g5, so she stops that with h6. And then she uh, finds a way to bargain. I mean, she gives up this pawn and then wants to get this pawn and this always bothered her opponent and uh, this created a lot of chances for Mary. After a3, bishop a5, knight e8, she wants to blockade the pawn on c5. This was a nice resource. Her opponent thought, okay, it's, it's, a, it's a great move because it's attacking both the pieces, but she has seen rook b2. Bishop into e8 is not possible as there is a2. And if you play rook b2, there is a1 queen and black has good chances here. So. Her opponent had to go back bishop e6 to prevent a2 and this gave the chance to uh, Mary to play, put the knight on c7. Now this position is at least equal. Mary is no longer in danger. But then she converted this. After a few moments you can see that uh, she also brought her king. And then the critical moment came here where her opponent went wrong. After c6 king e7 the way to draw this game for white was to play c7. And when you play king d6, the idea was bishop g4. Uh, and if you take king takes pawn, then there is bishop into pawn. And of course, you can't take the bishop as a c8 queen is threatened. So again, this was a great uh, way for her opponent to make a draw. But her opponent missed it. She played bishop f5. And after king d6, suddenly it is black who is winning. And then she went on to win this game. So again, great win for India. And in the second match, uh, Harika played a very beautiful game against Abdul Malik Zansaya. She repeated her idea that she has played in this tournament, like she went knight b8 in Brer style. And then um, in this position, 
Ivanchu versus Karuana happened and Karuana had played Knight H5. But uh, in this position, Dronavili Harika played Rook C8 and Bishop G7. And uh, she slowly outplayed her opponent on the dark squares. Uh, let me get that position here. After Knight Df6, she played Queen D8. And then you can see that she plays everything on the dark squares. After Rook D1, she captures Bishop into D5. And the point is, she has Queen G5. Knight E4 is not coming because of Knight takes F3. And then rook takes e4 follows so her opponent played queen c3 and now she wants to play knight e4 as the pawn is now protected and harika senses this and plays f5 beautiful not allowing knight e4 and after king h1 she activates her rook and then queen h4 there was one moment when i was watching this live i thought uh, black has a winning advantage and i was wrong after rook a5 i was considering rook a5 followed by knight g3 and then i thought wow I have found a brilliancy with knight takes f3 but i was wrong if harika had played this she would have lost uh, after knight f3 you know the variation i was uh, considering was this position but this position is lost for black because black has queen c7 check followed by queen takes d6 attacking this and then if you play king g7 there is knight e5 i think oh sorry not knight e5 knight h4 because knight e5 there is queen f4 and white is pressing in this position is very close to a win so this um, after rook takes a5 harika switched gears to the king side and then uh, slowly she knew that the threat of knight g3 is very dangerous but she took her time to achieve it and then at this moment she found the nice tactic with queen takes d2 the point is if you take queen d2 there is a four. so this helped india get one point and then against uh, in the game between um, uh, Vaishali and uh, Dinara. Let me get the colors right. So her opponent uh, employed e4, e5, and then again it was a d3 dialo pace with c4. And I think the critical moment for her was after rook b1. Her opponent went wrong with uh, f5, which gave her a pawn because there is a check that comes uh, if you pin for example after bishop c6 if you play rook c8 which happened in the game there is bishop check and white is a healthy pawn up but ultimately after a few moves i mean there is some practical chance that black has because of these pawns but uh, vaishali made sure that uh, the position was always in control and after rook, rook c2 and bishop f6 Pieces got exchanged and eventually the game ended in a draw. Then in the game between uh, Kameli Denova and Tanya Sestev, Tanya was black and she opted uh, for the Rilo pace. And again, she also played a beautiful game. Uh, there was a nice sacrifice that she came up with after CD, CD, Knight F4 and uh, Queen C8. And it's very clear what she is hinting at after queen c8 she wants to attack on the king side and she played knight g2 which is a very nice move and the point is that after king g2 there is bishop h3 and if you go king g1 there is queen g4 ending the game instantly but her opponent played king h2 and after queen g4 and queen h5 black has a winning advantage um, there were a lot of uh, ways to win in this game but um, and at one point uh, she overlooked a tactic and lost after rook g3 bishop f5 bishop e4 she picked up all the pawns got f5 and now i'm coming to the critical position after bishop b2 here she played the strong move bishop f6 and after queen a1 she could have finished the game with f4 the point is if bishop takes f6 there is fg3 if bishop takes g7 there is e takes f3 threatening a deadly queen h2 because there's just no way for white to give a check and so this was possible but it's important to mention that tanya was having less than a minute on the clock in this position and after queen a1 she played ef3 which was a blunder because after bishop f6 rook g7 is threatened and if you take rook f6 there is queen f6 and there is one last tactic but it doesn't work in black's favor after rook takes f1 queen h1 queen g1 and gf6 if you look at the material it looks like black has a lot of pawns but they are all very weak and black has no chance in this position rook d4 is coming and white is winning 
So um, Tanya resigned and then we were left with one last game which is Marianne Gomes versus Dueto Gulmira. And in this game Marianne Gomes employed her favorite rating system which she has been playing for many years and she got a typical uh, rating plus equals position she was better throughout and it felt as if she was playing on autopilot because all moves came very natural naturally to her this is a position that i would definitely consider as clearly better for white and she really played in her element and um, i think there was one critical moment where after e5 f5 uh, she could have maybe um, extended her advantage with uh, move like knight e5 knight e5 and bishop and pawn takes e5 but in the game she played bishop c5 which gave black some chance to come back in the game after knight c4 but i think after f5 knight d7 and bishop d4 you know black uh, white can make use of the f line and create a strong attack she went for bishop c5 and uh, she did keep some practical chances throughout the game and that helped her here she came up with a pawn sacrifice with f5 and after g takes f5 she played bishop d4 and after bishop g6 rook f1 rook f8 bishop f3 her opponent goes for f4 and after f4 uh, i think this position after g4 f4 black's position is not so easy to defend because of these bishops and some deadly threats that could come for example if there is no bishop here there is move like bishop d5 this queen should go to g5 very soon this was all probably going in her mind and so she played queen h2 and after queen d6 she brought back a queen and then came to h4 she achieved what she wanted and suddenly it is white who is playing for a win and it's clearly winning because queen g5 is a dangerous threat so after this shuffling she was able to put opponent under pressure and then scored a very important important point for india so the end was pretty nice she played bishop d6 and queen d5 and it's lost it's mate in two for example after queen c6 if king d8 queen c7 is a mate if king e6 there is bishop d5 ending the game so those were the games of uh, the quarterfinals i really loved enjoy i mean i really watched um, i enjoyed watching the entire quarterfinals because all the games went till the very end now um, india will be playing against uh, georgia in the semi finals and uh, all the five players are also pretty strong in the georgian team and again it will be an exciting contest to watch don't forget to watch the broadcast on chess.com/tv at 6:30 pm and uh, do show your support to team india i'll be back with another video soon until then take care bye bye